You are listening to the Nightline Sports Network, brought to you by Travis Dever and the Dever team, 386-690-1636. Welcome to the AAC Report, only on the Nightline Sports Network. I'm Jeff Allen. Thanks so much for listening. Coming up, we'll wrap up last week's action on the gridiron and get you set for this week's game, including... Our spotlight game of the week featuring number 21 Cincinnati at SMU. Rich Phillips, the voice of the SMU Mustangs, will join us to discuss that in just a few moments. Last week's action looked like this. A Thursday night opener last week in which UCF routed Temple 70-13, to a 70-burger for the Knights in that victory as they go 2-0 in conference, 5-1 and one overall for the season. The aforementioned SME Mustangs had a wild one. They defeated Navy 40-34 to last Friday night. And the two games on Saturday, Tulane, which has now cracked the top 25, getting in at number 25 in the polls. They defeated South Florida 45-31. to And East Carolina with a wild four-overtime victory over Memphis 47 47- to 45. All right, looking at the action coming up this weekend, it looks like this. Friday night, Tulsa at Temple, 7.30 on ESPN2. That series all-time tied at three apiece. Tulsa won last year, 44-10. to 10. On Saturday, Houston faces Navy, and that is in Annapolis. Noon on ESPNU. The Cougs lead the all-time series 6-2. They were 28-20 victors last season. Memphis at number 25, Tulane, 3-30 on ESPN2. Memphis leads the all-time series 24-13. There's been one tie, and the Tigers won last year's meeting 33-28. UCF visits East Carolina, 7-30 on ESPNU. The series tied all-time at 10 games apiece, so the winner will be the champion of the series, at least for the time being, as this will be their last scheduled matchup as members of the American. The Knights won last year by a score of 20-16. to And up next, we will talk about our Spotlight Game of the Week as number 21 Cincinnati faces SMU. Rich Phillips, the voice of the Mustangs, will join us to talk about that when the AAC Report continues after this. Hey, this is Travis Dever, Kai's Real Estate, the Dever team, New Smyrna Beach. Your source for real estate and everything else, New Smyrna Beach. Proud sponsor of Nightline. Call me anytime at 386-690-1636. That's 386-690-1636. Let me show you my hometown, New Smyrna Beach, UCF's favorite beach. Go Knights and charge on. An auto accident can change your life forever. At Chad Bar Law, we are raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney. Hi, I'm Chad Barr, and I want you to know that our entire team is dedicated to providing you with the representation you deserve in your greatest time of need. If you or a loved one have been injured in an auto accident, call 407-599-9036 for a free consultation or visit chadbarlaw.com. At Chad Bar Law, our clients come to us in need and leave as family. Offices, Altamont Springs. Looking for more out of your Porsche? Look no further than Flat6Motorsports.com. They have the widest selection of aftermarket Porsche parts anywhere in the world. With over 85 product lines and in-depth expertise, Flat6Motorsports.com is your one-stop shop for any Porsche performance needs. Whether you're shopping for intakes, exhaust, suspension, or tuning, they have you covered. Flat6Motorsports.com is the premier Porsche aftermarket specialist. Check them out at Flat6Motorsports.com. All right, time now to take a look at our Spotlight Game of the Week as number one Cincinnati takes on SMU. And joining us now to discuss that... Our pleasure to welcome back to the show the voice of the SMU Mustangs, Rich Phillips. Rich, glad to have you back. Good to be on with you. Yeah, so uh, let's talk about SMU season so far today. Three and three overall, one and one in conference. So it's been a been a 500 season all the way around, but a big matchup with Cincinnati and a chance to uh, reestablish themselves in the conference race. Give me your assessment of the season to date so far. 
Um, it's been frustrating at times, for sure. Uh, in the three losses, two of them were games that they very well could have had. The, the one at Maryland was really uh, disappointing, I think. In week three, they uh, were in the lead going into the fourth quarter and gave up two fourth-quarter touchdowns to lose to what turned out to be a really good Maryland team, by the way. And then the next week at home against TCU, they just dug too big of a hole early. It was 28-7. In the second quarter, they fought back and made it a one-possession game twice in the second half, but didn't have enough. Obviously, we now know we've seen how good TCU has been since then with three straight wins over ranked teams. Uh, the only game that they really uh, kind of uh, looked overmatched at times was in the second half of the UCF game, uh, one that they probably should have led by a lot more than they did at halftime. They were up by three at half of that game where they had really dominated play in the first half and then gave up 31 quick points in the second half. So definitely some frustration here in the first six weeks of the season uh, under Rhett Lashley. Yeah, and as you mentioned, uh, you know, we've seen you see now that Maryland's a really good team. TCU number eight in the country. And uh, I guess it had to kind of be weird to see Sonny Dykes, the former SMU coach, on the TCU sideline, huh? <laughs> Uh, it was definitely unusual. It was very highly anticipated. A sold-out crowd was on hand and ready to boo as soon as the TCU team came out on the field. And, uh, it certainly hasn't helped, I think, some of the uh, hurt feelings with the way they had performed with Sonny over there in Fort Worth this year, too. Yeah, and you're coming off a victory over Navy last Friday night, 40-34. to And again, this week, it's uh, number 21 Cincinnati. You know, certainly uh, the right to be the conference favorite going into this season. But this is not the same Cincinnati team as last season. They they lost a lot on both sides of the ball. But yet, they have a good program there. And Luke Fickle uh, certainly has been able to to reload to, to some degree. Yeah, they've done a really good job with as many things as they lost. And it all started, of course, with Desmond Ritter, at quarterback, a guy who was a four-year starter there and was fantastic. Ben Bryant's done a really good job. I've seen him play multiple times this year. I think he's done a really good job taking over that quarterback position. Uh, lots of changes at running back for them. And then, of course, defensively, they you know they were so good defensively. They lost a ton of guys up front. They lost a lot of guys in the back end, too. Uh, they've had to change over, yet sitting here looking at them, and they're still – you know, giving up only 21 points per game, and they're top 20 in the country in total defense, giving up just 313 yards. So not quite what they were when they went to the CFP last year, but still an awfully good team in the American. Yeah, and then, again, as we kind of mentioned, you know, this is a good opportunity for SMU. Uh, you know, only one loss in conference so far, and a victory over Cincinnati would, could certainly propel them uh, towards the rest of the season. Yeah, yeah, they're going to have to get off to a great start on Saturday. You know, that's been uh, what got them, like I said, in the TCU game, got them kind of behind in that one. They didn't have a great start. And then the last two weeks, both against UCF and Navy, they didn't finish the first half well. They uh, they gave up a late touchdown in the first half to Navy and then a touchdown right away to start the second half and actually fall behind in that game. They just had uh, lulls in their game at times that they're going to have to avoid this Saturday against Cincinnati. And tell me about the season for Tanner Mordecai, the quarterback so far. You know, I got to see him at the UCF game for the first time in person. Uh, certainly an impressive guy at quarterback and uh, certainly has put up uh, huge numbers in his two seasons. Absolutely. I mean, he set the school record with uh, 39 passing touchdowns a year ago. He hasn't been quite as good this year as he was last year. Now, some of it could be also a little bit of what's around it. He had... You know, uh, a tight end and two wide receivers that went on to the NFL that were on last year's team. Well, we've got one receiver, Rasheed Rice, that looks like he'll be going on to the NFL, but he doesn't have quite as many weapons around him. Uh, 15 touchdown passes in the first half of the season, so on pace for 30 after throwing 39 last year. Still uh, been terrific the uh, year and a half he's been here. He's thrown for over 2,000 yards. Uh, They've got a four-star recruit uh, sitting behind him who redshirted a year ago, and he's a redshirt freshman this year that a lot of people want to see, but there's no doubt Tanner is the guy right now, the quarterback for SMU. So what is are the concerns on defense? I know in recent weeks they have given up uh, quite a bit of points. Uh, you know, what are the concerns there? Uh, they, they struggled at times against the run, which, you know, although last week against Navy, they ran for, I don't know, 350-something yards, and, and it never seemed like they were really effective, if that makes sense. I mean, they, they had to run 77 times to gain that many yards, but they haven't stopped the run terrifically. And you saw the UCF game, obviously, John Rice Plumley just ran all over them uh, at times in that second half of that game. Uh, and I think they're they're – 
their shortcoming has been a little bit at the linebacker spot. They're not quite as physical sometimes as they need to be. Uh, Isaac Slade Vitality, a middle linebacker, uh, has had some good games, but had some moments where I don't think he's been quite as physical as he needs to be. Uh, they've had some injuries, too, on the defensive side. Their, their other starting linebacker, Timmy Phillips, uh, didn't even play last week because of injury, and he had been the leading tackler going into that game. So uh, kind of in the middle of that defensive linebacker, they're needing to find some ways to shore things up a little bit more. And, of course, against Cincinnati, you already mentioned, uh, you know, they need to get off to a better start. What are some of the other keys to the game for SMU to come out on the winning end? They're going to need to figure out how to run the football. <laughs> you know, <laughs> last week they went in shorthanded already because their top two runners, Trey Siggers and Belton Gardner, were out last week with injuries. But they've not been terribly effective. They're each right at 230 yards through the four games that they've been able to play in this year because of injuries. Uh, last week, their leading rusher was Tanner Mordecai, and he's not a great runner, but he ripped off a 60-yard touchdown run in the win over Navy and ended up being really the only effective runner in the game. They have really struggled. Uh, T.J. McDaniel is a guy who came back from missing a year plus with a gruesome uh, dislocated foot from a couple of years ago. He's been okay, but really uneven, I think. Uh, they have a five-star recruit who actually had gone to Alabama last year, Kamar Wheaton. He's a guy from the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex who decided to transfer home. But we have only seen him in very spotty play thus far. He had a knee injury last year that got him registered at Alabama, and just doesn't appear he's been fully healthy yet this year for them to try to take advantage of him. So the ground game has really been a, a huge shortcoming so far for this team this season. And, of course, we've mentioned, you know, a win for SMU gets them back into the conference race. And, you know, I, despite Cincinnati-Houston being the, the top two favorites going into the season, I think this is as wide open an opportunity as there has been in the American in a while. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of teams in the mix. Uh, you know, Tulane is obviously for real this season, six and one uh, overall, three and zero in conference. Uh, we, you know, UCF's two and zero in conference with a five and one mark uh, as well. And there are no easy games to play in this conference. It looks like. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, we're sitting here looking. Uh, Tulsa is 0-2 in the league, and SMU goes there next week. And I, I couldn't even begin to tell you the last time SMU won, a- SMU won at Tulsa. It's been such a tough place for them. <laughs> Neither is UCF. <laughs> uh, I, think, I, think ten- I think Memphis looks really good at times, and they've lost their last two uh, on the last possession of the game. to Houston uh, two weeks ago in the overtime game last week at East Carolina. East Carolina, I think, looks much better, too. And then uh, – mm. As you mentioned, Tulane, Tulane shocking us all into the top 25 in the AP poll this week, and deservedly so with a 6-1 and one record. Yeah. Well, Rich, I always appreciate you taking the time to uh, break things down on SMU for us. Uh, please, uh, shameless plugs for uh, your coverage of the Mustangs. Uh, yeah, we're uh, our, our uh, home flagship station is 96.7 and 1310 The Ticket, but you can also find uh, the SMU app, and you can always listen to our broadcast for both our coaches' show on Wednesday nights as well as all of our games on the SMU app. Free to download and free to listen. Outstanding. Rich, as always, thank you so much for your time. You got it. Thank you. The Cincinnati SMU game is a noon kick on ESPN, the Bearcats lead the all-time series 5-1, to one, and they routed the Mustangs last year by a 48-14 to 14 score. The honors for last week, the Offensive Player of the Week, John Rice Plumley of UCF, tied an AAC single-game record, figuring in seven touchdowns in their big win over Temple. 18-22, a career-high 373 yards passing, four touchdowns, and he added three on the ground. He became only the third FBS player in the last decade to finish a game with at least four touchdown passes and three rushing touchdowns. The Defensive Player of the Week, Julius Wood of East Carolina. A game high 11 tackles, including six solo stops, and a big defensive play in their four-overtime victory over Memphis. He had a 47-yard interception ref- return for a touchdown as part of their uh, comeback from an early 17 to nothing deficit. The Special Teams Player of the Week, Chris Howard, the Memphis kicker led all AAC kickers 13 points, connecting on three field goals and four PATs. He hit from 40, 23, and 46 yards. He's 14 for 14 on field goal attempts this season, leading all FBS kickers. We'll check out some of the other sports final news and notes coming up next on the AAC Report.
If you haven't figured it out yet, I love Tijuana Flats. I would love them even if they weren't a partner with us on the Nightline Sports Network. They have all kinds of great Tex-Mex food, and it's fresh, by the way. Made to order burritos, tacos, enchiladas, chimichangas, quesadillas, bowls, nachos, and taco salads. And if you haven't tried the queso, you are completely missing out. It is the best queso that I've ever had in my life. Absolutely hands down. And the sauce bar that they have, everything from wild to mild in there, absolutely awesome, awesome stuff. Not only do I love the food at Tijuana Flats, but I love the company, a UCF-born company. And they give back to the community with the Justin Queso Foundation. So head to your local Tijuana Flats, Tex-Mex for everyone. Hey Jeep Wrangler owners, have you ever sat in your office at work and watched the rain just pour into your Jeep because the weatherman said that there was a zero chance of rain? Or you put your doors back on because there was a 100% chance and then not a drop of rain fell? Well, there's a company out there that can help take the worry away and give you the peace of mind to be without your doors. The company's called Life Without Doors. They make waterproof rain curtains and dash covers for Wranglers. Life Without Doors is there to help make the decision to leave the doors at home an easy one. Find out more at lifewithoutdoors.com. Spice up your company with homemade marketing services from Tasty Gravy Creative. Tasty Gravy serves up a menu of budget-friendly marketing, graphic design, and public relations services customized to your specific goals. Co-owned by a UCF graduate, Tasty Gravy can help refresh your brand, strengthen your online presence, or reinforce your company's message. Contact Tasty Gravy for help with your website, social media, marketing, advertising materials, and more. Visit TastyGravy.com. All right, let's check in on volleyball, where, of course, the top two teams, UCF and Houston, score some Player of the Week honors as usual. McKenna Melville, the Offensive Player of the Week, once again, averaging 6.83 points per set, 6.17 kills per set, and a pair of conference wins over, uh, for the Knights last week. The Defensive Player of the Week from Houston, Kate Georgiatis as uh, she finished with 7.17 digs per set for the Cougars, had 16 against SMU before finishing with 27 at Memphis, the third most digs in a three-set match in program history. Women's soccer, the offensive player of the week, Kristen Scott at UCS scored four goals on the week, including a brace in their 4 nothing win over Cincinnati and a pair of goals in a 3-2 road win at Tulsa. The defensive player of the week, Haley Spray of Memphis as a, uh, she helped their back line score a 2-0 shutout against Temple, allowing only one shot on goal. The goalkeeper of the week, Carolyn Delisle of UCF, five saves in their two victories last week. And the rookie of the week, Hazia Arextabala Blanco of South Florida, had the game-winning goal from a tight angle in the 81st minute against East Carolina on Sunday. Men's soccer. The offensive player of the week, Alvaro Torriagos. Uh, he had all three, a part in all three goals for the Golden Hurricane in their 3 nothing win over Memphis. The Defensive Player of the Week, Mariano Fazio of Tulsa, uh, allowing just three shots in the match in that contest. And the Goalkeeper of the Week, Ewan Gar- Garonski of Temple, uh, his second Goalkeeper of the Week award, had a clean sheet against FAU and six saves in that one nothing victory. Rookie of the Week, Rocco Hofglockner of Temple, and again, he was part of that uh, clean sheet victory and added a secondary assist on the game-winning goal. News for men's basketball. Houston has been selected as a unanimous preseason favorite to win the 2022-23 AAC men's basketball title in voting down by the league's head coaches. That announced last week. Tab the favorite for the fourth consecutive year, receiving all 10 possible first-place votes and a total of 100 points. Memphis finished second, Cincinnati third, followed by Tulane, Temple, UCF, SMU, Wichita State, South Florida, Tulsa, and East Carolina. Marcus Sasser was picked as the preseason player of the year, the Houston guard uh, getting that honor, and his teammate, Jarace Walker, has uh, been tabbed as the preseason rookie of the year. The preseason all-conference first team 
along with Sasser are Kendrick Davis of Memphis, DeAndre Williams of the Tigers, Damian Dunn of Temple, and Jalen Cook of Tulane. The all-conference second team, David Julius of Cincinnati, Jamal Shedd of Houston, Khalif Battle of Temple, Kevin Cross of Tulane, along with his teammate, Jalen Forbes. And that'll put a wrap on this edition. As always, please follow me on Twitter at JeffAllen underscore 88. And you can follow the Nightline Sports Network at UCF underscore Nightline. This has been the AAC Report only on the Nightline Sports Network. I'm Jeff Allen. Thanks so much for listening.